welcome to this module called Supply Chain Management and Logistics, Week 3, Enabling Technologies for Supply Chain Management, Clip 1, Quality and Safety Standards. I'm Katrina Durham from the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture and the University of Tasmania. I'll be presenting this lecture on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Rajendra Adhikari, Research Fellow in Value Chain Management from the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, and Laurie Bonney, Associate Professor of Value Chain Innovation. Along with Rajendra from the University of Tasmania and Senior Lecturer Birgit Schulz-Alaires of Lincoln University in New Zealand, they've all co-authored this module. First, we must understand what is meant by food quality and safety. The attributes of food safety are classified into the following classes. Functional credence or non-functional attributes. Functional attributes can be search attributes. This means characteristics that can be easily observed by a purchaser, for example, colour, size, and freedom from blemishes, or experience attributes that can be evaluated after consumption, for example, sweetness and taste. Credence or non-functional attributes are, for example, organic, hormone-free, ethically produced, or sourced from a specific geographical region. In food systems, they can generally be categorised into five types. Provenance, production, system, vari variety or breed, use of inputs such as pesticides or fertilisers, and ways of post-harvest handling. Product integrity or quality assurance systems provide auditable standards and authoritative backing for claims about food safety, provenance and sustainable production. QA systems add transaction costs for compliance, auditing and governments. In food systems, they can generally be categorised into five types. Provenance, production systems, variety or breed, use of inputs such as pesticides or fertilisers, and ways of post-harvest handling. Product integrity or quality assurance systems provide auditable standards and authoritative backing for claims about food safety provenance and sustainable production. QA systems add transaction costs for compliance auditing and governments generally only get involved in regulating food safety. Food safety must be understood as a basic requirement so that in developed countries we would not expect to pay price premiums to be achieved by just adhering to respective standards. However, differentiation and price premiums may be possible in specific markets based on provenance or production systems such as organic produce. This figure gives you a broad overview of different level, levels of quality and safety standards. We can roughly distinguish them in three levels. First is the baseline public system of quality and safety which applies to basically all producers in the country as seen in the Food Standards Code. BRC Global which have emerged from individual retail company standards and the need for harmonisation. The third and final tier is small-scale systems which can be private or public and span the entire supply chain or only the farmer processor or processor retail dyads and apply only to a certain subset of Australian systems such as certified organic, biodynamic or supermarket supply chain standards. In the private systems they may also be direct audits by the buyer in the form of a third party certification. Why does this occur? There are several reasons. First is third party is more credible as it is economically independent. Second, certification bodies can accumulate better and lower cost expertise and knowledge. And third, there may be increased efficiencies through cross auditing. So how do quality assurance systems affect value chain governance? Baseline and large scale systems reduce uncertainty and require no partner specific investment. This means that buyers and suppliers have more independence and the cost of switching from one buyer or supplier to another would not incur additional costs to adopt another quality and safety standard. This differs to more specific smaller scale systems, particularly those which are set up by certain retailers such as supermarket systems. The extra effort a supplier must take to adhere to a supermarket standard and the cost of certification will lead to a tighter bond as a supplier may be of no value in transactions with other buyers. Some studies have shown that retailers purposely use their own quality and safety standards to exert power over other suppliers. At the same time, such inputs enhance supply chain integrations. However, 
all, as almost all of the retailers have developed their own standards and audits, the load of extra documentation and time dedicated to the auditing process increases, therefore there is a tendency to harmonise external standards or at least have one certification body that is able to audit several standards at the same time. Why certification, you ask? As a producer of horticulture products, one can often question the usefulness of certification with the additional documentation requirements and costs. Of course, this may be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's obvious in everyone's interest to achieve the highest possible level of food safety. Issues related to foodborne illnesses can damage the entire sector image and cause losses for the actors along the value chain. Also, we want to avoid food waste by having the highest possible level of food integrity. As was discussed earlier, some standards can also be used for differentiation to generate a competitive advantage and price premium. If the food, in the food industry, it is often observed that retailers introduce their own standards, therefore increasing their market power and pushing for supply chain integration. Compliance with a particular standard can then be a qualifying formula rather than a winning formula. In the food industry, traceability is a system to trace and verify, verify the source of an issue, generally up the chain. It is also important to discuss approaches to ensure that if a food safety problem occurs, there is a mechanism in place to trace the issues back to the origin as quickly as possible. Input production traceability requirements are such that each actor needs to record all of their transactions between suppliers and consumers. This is called the one step forward and the one step back principle. Technologies such as BAR, alphanumeric and QR codes, RFID chips, wireless sensor networks, along with other databases can help with traceability. New technologies such as DNA analyzers are emerging in this field. An example of their use is to identify fraudulent behaviours regarding raw material provenance. Huge databases are now being built up to ensure a quick response. Quality assurance is quite a complex and sometimes highly political subject. Generally, quality assurance systems do not confer competitive advantage. They are simply a licence to be in the game. Thank you for your time and next we will be discussing efficient consumer response.